You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host, and today I have a fan favorite, Nancy Liedberg, Officer Liedberg, um, to talk about um, a movie coming up dealing with substance abuse called If Only. Did yes. I get it right? Yes, you did. Okay. Excellent. Tell us about it. Well, thank you for having me on today. Um, the If Only viewing is going to be Tuesday, January 12th, at mm -hmm. the War Memorial at 6 p.m. Uh, folks that are still interested in getting tickets, they're on our website, which is brocktonpolice.eventbrite.com. And it's basically a short film uh, produced by Jim Wahlberg, which uh, is Mark Wahlberg's brother. Mm -hmm. He's the executive director of the Youth Foundation. And uh, it's basically to help parents start the conversation about prescription drug use and misuse and, um, or continue the conversation with uh, their kids about the dangers of opioids. So this kind of fits in with the different trainings that you've already oh, done absolutely. with the Not My Kid and the other stuff. Yeah. We were talking off camera about how many trainings. Uh, yeah, so Not My Kid, uh, I think we started, and I don't have my notes in front of me, but I want to say 2008. Mm -hmm. We've hosted over 75 trainings, and we've uh, met with about 1,500 parents now. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. And this is, you know, still even, it's probably even more of a hot topic, oh, unfortunately, really than it yeah. was in 2008. It's gaining momentum instead of losing. Documentaries on HBO, but this is your chance to go locally, be right. with other people, be yep. in a room. Um, who's putting it on? Who's putting the event on? So it's a collaboration. Um, pretty much everybody in the Brockton scene that is uh, a resource in either prevention or education or early intervention. Um, the mayor's office, the police department, um, we're going to have multiple resources anywhere from the Opioid Collaborative to Banyan, Wicked Sober, uh, No First Time, which is an educational program for kids in middle school, um, Teen Challenge will be there, and uh, BMZ, the COPE Center, they'll actually be um, doing Narcan demonstrations. My fellow you, Miami alum, Heather. Yes, who does she's all wonderful. That work. Learn to cope. She I see on is the everywhere, doing everything, and always promoting and supporting, you know, and and always the quiet one in the background, not, never looking for any accolades or credit, but um, is more than willing to educate anyone where they're at. I know she loves TV about as much as you do. Yeah, well, From I wasn't going to say it. <laughs> okay, but that's okay. Um, I I've, hey, I radio would, mark. No, no, no. That's what I was told. Steve Roy told me that years ago. <laughs> But th this is good. I'm, I'm actually, I was telling you before, I'm disappointed. I have my school committee meeting for I Southeastern know, Vogue Tech because even if it doesn't affect you, it, it still affects, affects you. someone it you know. It still affects you. It affects someone you know. It, it might not directly, but it's certainly indirectly. And, and we're all in this together. I mean, it, the stats are what they are. And um, I guess, you know, when we look at education through parents, uh, parents are, are very savvy to educating their kids about drugs as far as alcohol and marijuana. They're saying about 80% talk about alcohol, 81% they're talking about marijuana. But the number hovers around 14 or 15% mm -hmm. when we talk about opioid dangers. And uh, that really has to be a better number. Parents really have to start driving the message home that you know, if there's addiction in the family, you could potentially pre gen genetically predispose your kids to addiction. Well, I mean, everybody has a grandparent, and oh, a sure. lot of times, sure. like and my, that my folks are getting up there, and my mother's had hip surgery, sure. and my Absolutely. father's had different right. surgeries, and they're in the house. And somebody can go into the house, go into the medicine cabinet, exactly. get exactly. something. I mean, we we put all that away. So they, my my dad, I I can talk about this. My dad took my mother's oxy by accident, and he is he saying he that to a police officer? No, he <laughs> owed, no he OD. They revived oh, him geez. with Narcan That's in Easton, terrible. and I wouldn't have ever known about Narcan right. and right. Mayor Carpenter not really talked sure. about it so strongly when he took sure. office and made sure that we had it. The Eastern Fire Department had it as well. And um, you get the stuff in the mail and you can have up to 360 pills in a 90-day period. That's four pills a day. It's out of control. And some young kid sure. by accident, you know. Well, I mean, and, and typically that's how the kids are starting is they're finding that it's easy to access from medicine cabinets. So you're not going to notice if one or two pills are missing. Mm -hmm. They're not taking all 30 or all 60 or, not, or all 90. But um, 
that, you know, you, you say uh, parents and grandparents, but that generation, medicine went in the medicine cabinet. Right. And um, when we started noticing that kids were abusing these meds, something had to change. Mm -hmm. uh, so obviously with Not My Kid, we do, you know, educate parents to lock up prescription medicines or dispose of them. And um, on this evening in particular, we'll be doing a mobile take back, which is great. Mm -hmm. And then we'll be talking about having uh, the drug box at the station, which is also awesome. But just every little bit, you know, helping. Now, there's been a ton of focus on this. The governor has yeah. a whole task force. As there Ma should be. Mayor Carpenter. I always say, the where's the outrage? You know? Right. Why right. does it take somebody very personal, very close to somebody, for people to get upset? It is absolutely, it's just completely out of control how many kids this affects. So the war, war memorial. And not just kids anymore. I you're mean, right. You're right. The war memorial is a good sized place. There's the nice seating yeah. upstairs. There's the nice balcony cushy will be chairs opened. downstairs. Yep. Um, what, Three, 350. 350. So that's a lot of people. Fire code, I'm supposed to say, one, I think it's 145 upstairs and 208 downstairs. Oh, there you go. So. Got all the numbers. But, but we'll uh, have it, we'll have it sold out. Okay. Um, I'm hoping maybe, and we can check this out later, I'm not trying to put you on the spot or anything. Maybe put me on the spot. Maybe we can get some excerpts from it and we can maybe get permission to put some of it on TV just to after yeah, the fact, I can, because hopefully we'll be able to do more them. than the one screening. Yeah. You know, I get some ideas well, for you. We we definitely want to go beyond this one screening. Obviously, this is the first in Brockton, and, and for the most part, the South Shore. Yeah. So it's obviously open to other communities as well. But we're hoping that once people see the film, which is absolutely fantastic, it was so well done, but once they see the film, that they'll want to host screenings themselves. So schools, boys and girls clubs, you know, maybe your school committee for mm -hmm. Southeastern. Yeah. But um, certainly just getting the word out there that they can host their own viewing and continue the conversation. What I like the most about an evening like this is the education. We'll have the resource tables at the beginning, and then at the end we'll have a, a question and answer period. So mm -hmm. people in the field can in, talk to parents and answer questions, you know, right then and there. Okay. Um, anything you want to add that we haven't covered or you want to reiterate the date, time, place, all of that? Sure. Uh, it's Tuesday, January 12th at the War Memorial at 6 p.m. And tickets are online on uh, BroxtonPolice.Eventbrite.com. And it's free. And we certainly welcome parents. And it's suggested for kids 13 and older mm -hmm. because it is a, it's a really um, emotional and... Um, it gets me every time. I've seen it six times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but I'm looking really forward to it. And if people want more information on how to how to host their own screening, they can certainly email me Nancy at BroxtonPolice.com, and I can put them in touch with the people that um, produce the film. Well, perfect. Thanks for continuing the education for and getting me. the information out to people that hopefully can help and, and prevent things. Thanks. You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Linda, your host. Stay tuned for more events, places, people, and faces right here in the City of Champions.